guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an incredible day. Now guys, this is a very quick video of me repotting on a couple of my Lophophora cacti. Now a lot of you will be familiar with the Lophophora williamsii cacti, which is commonly called the peyote cactus. And in this case, I have got a couple of different types of Lophophoras. And this one is the Lophophora diffuser which is uh, more of a lighter, paler green colour than the normal um, Lophophora williamsii, which is usually a darker colour. And this one has never flowered for me. I've had it for many, many years. And it was one big head, and that sort of died back and um, sprouted four little pups all around it, which was great. But as you can see, it's in desperate need to be repotted as it's literally growing out the pot. And also it had a bad case of uh, spider mite, red spider mite last year, um, that sort of damaged the growing tip. And thankfully it's making a good recovery so far. So I'm gonna be potting that one on. And this one here is the um, Lophophora coespistosa. And again, it's a multi-headed specimen and the Lophophora williamsii will sort of send out lots of pups over time, but usually it takes a long time. With this one, it's a different type where it does form many multiple heads when it's still relatively young. And look at that, it's wonderful, isn't it, guys? As I say, they all have beautiful tiny little pink flowers during the summer. Again, this one has never flowered for me. I've had my other Lophophora williamsii's flower all through the uh, spring, summer and way into the autumn every year for me. And I've got lots of videos on them flowering. So links up above to a video to see what Lophophora Lophophora looks like when it's in flower. It's spectacular. And also I've already made a video on how to care for and grow Lophophora cacti. So links up above to that video. That goes into detail in how to look after Lophophora cacti, including the Williamsii, the Caspistosa and the Diffuse. And there's many other types of sort of hybrids as well now. But basically the care for Lophophora is exactly the same. So links up above to that video, guys, and gives you a bit more information about how to care for them and also how to pollinate the flowers and how to get seed and also how to grow peyote from seed as well. Links up above to that video um, of how to grow Lophophora from seed. And uh, anyway, enough of my waffle, guys. And let's get to potting on, shall we, guys? Now, we do the little fella first. And this one is the Little Lophophora Diffuser. Now, always when it comes to repotting, as I've mentioned before, I've done many videos on repotting, so I won't bore you all. But basically, if you've not repotted a cactus before, um, this one is very easy because there's no spines. But if you're not too familiar with repotting cacti, links up above to a video on how to repot a cactus. And in that video, I show you two very different types of cacti that are certainly not as easy to repot as this. They're spiny ones. One is a, a large round bowel cactus that's very spiny and one is also a tall cactus that's spiny um, and I show you how to easily re repot without hurting yourself in them videos so this is just purely um, a video vlog of me potting on my um, two different types of Lophophoras here and as I say this is literally falling out the pot anyway so just gently squeezing it apart to um, come away Aha, uh -huh, that's it. And as you can see, it's desperate to be repotted. Now, it's always a good time whenever you're potting on to go and check the root system through. Check there's no mealybugs. Um, Lophophora cacti especially are prone to um, mealybug sometimes in the roots as well and definitely down this one has had it over the years but thankfully it's clear now it's spider mite that's done the damage to this last year as you can see there but thankfully it's recovering well and um so far so good hopefully a bit of a repot will give you a bit more of a kick start it's got a good root system on it so in this case all i'm gonna be doing is putting a bit of soil in here now I always prefer to make my own soil, um, you can, basically any well draining um, soil or compost mix is good for cacti and succulents. The most important thing is that it's well draining. Um, but I prefer to make my own. My own. I prefer to use a loam based uh, potting soil. In this case, um, we like to use Johnnings number one, two or three. Um, in this case I'm using Johnny's number two and I add a bit of extra perlite or sometimes a bit of sand or a bit of extra grit. Um, in this case I've used a bit of extra sand and a bit of perlite because we couldn't get hold of any grit this time. But um, the most important thing is obviously it's well draining and links up above to a video. Sorry about boring you with all these links guys but um, hopefully it will help you guys out. Links up above to a video on how to make your own cactus and succulent plant compost. So hopefully that, that will help you there and um, you can adjust the mix up to how 
you want. As I say, this is only how I do things. Um, many people do different things. The most important thing is that you have a well-draining soil because these plants are very prone. As you see, they, they have a large taproot and they will rot if they're kept soggy um, all the time. So, you know, extra sand, extra grit or perlite helps to keep it well-draining. And loam based soil I always prefer to use, but as I say, any good quality soil that you prefer that's well draining. And then placing that in there, and then um, obviously putting the soil all around the edges. And uh, all around there, like so. And then obviously you want to gently tuck it around the edges so that there's no sort of air pockets around, but you don't want to squash it in too, too hard where the roots are going to suffocate. Um, as in this case, always good to tap. Good little tip that my um, amazing fiance um, Hans um, actually gave me about uh, repotting cacti. But he said about um, gently tapping it around the edges because this will also help it to fall right down in between them nooks and crannies without having to crush the roots or press it down too much. Just gently pressing down like so. And you can sometimes use a little bit just to get into the the edges there. So you see a little bit just there. And, uh, I love repotting. I find it very therapeutic, guys. And uh, there you go. That one's done. Then a little bit more on the top. So tapping it in, gently pressing down to make sure that it's tucked in neatly and it's not too compressed so the plant's roots can breathe. And uh, there you go. That's that one done. And of course, always like to label. As this case, Lophophora diffusa. And uh, there you go, that's the first one. And then the next one, this is the um, Lophophora caespistosa. And again, squeezing it out to get it out there. And again, the next size up, as you say, always um, good not to jump too big of a size pot um, because obviously the, the plant needs to adjust its roots and too much soil can cause rot, as in this case. That's the next size up. Um, which is great and again checking the root system over to check there's no signs of bugs or anything else as this case got a good root system and um, just a case of potting it into the next pot and uh, you got soil in the bottom again that's good to give it a good any rough bits I always recommend probably sieving the soil through normally but I've been a bit lazy this time <laughs> gets rid of any of these sort of hard lumpy bits and then placing that in, there's a bit more soil in there. Again, I always don't like the, some of the soil mixes. In this case, we've used a loam based one, but they still always sort of add bits of peat in it, which I prefer to. It would love to go a completely peatless soil if it was possible, but unfortunately, even the even the loam based ones add it in. Um, that's it, and then that in there, like so. And then again. Tipping it all the way around. Sometimes it's good just to put a load of soil onto the table, I always find. And do that so you can see all around the edges. <laughs> it's wonderful. Again, sometimes use a little label. Use a little flat end or sometimes a little teaspoon or something just to push around. As again, you just want to gently get that soil around the edges just to. Um, just so there's no air pockets. And again, tapping it is a good tip, just so it helps to go right down in between, like so. <laughs> no. Tapping it. As you can see, there's still a bit of air, little air pocket there. You wanna make sure it's all all done, all around the sides. Like so. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. Hey, there you go. And then again, gently pressing it down, just lightly, just enough so snug in its pot and uh, there you go that's the all done again the label on <laughs> Lofa for caspistosa now put them there so you can see 
Now, what I normally recommend doing is obviously when I repot my cacti and succulents, I don't water them for a few days. Now, it's summer here at the moment, so um, I'm not going to, I don't recommend repotting in the winter anyway, unless it's an emergency, you've got root rot or something. But I normally leave, leave it probably for about a week or two until I start watering again. As in this case, um, the roots were pretty dry and there's been very little damage. So I'll probably leave it for a week and then I'll start watering again. Again, this is optional. Personally, I prefer to leave it a few days before watering. It gives chance for the uh, roots to heal and less chance of any root rot. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of cactus power. As always, from Ireland. And until the next video, guys. Bye.